Welcome to the Sugar Cube Critic. I'm your host, Professor Tom Nook. Today, I shall be reviewing Episode 8, Look Before You Sleep. Original release date, December 8, 2010. The episode is written by Charlotte Fullerton, who previously worked on Kim Possible, and has given Mope films such great episodes as A Bird in the Hoof, and Only a Bird in the Hoof, lackluster episodes such as Baby Cakes, and horrible episodes like... that. I'm going to unfortunately blame her for the HELL I'm about to experience. And I'm not exactly alone here, guys. This episode shows up on numerous worst episode lists, such as number 10 on Everybody's Evil's list of the all-time worst episodes. The Music Man 1012 put the episode as the third worst what? episode of season 1. The Mysterious Mr. Enter named this the ninth worst episode of all time, and Josh Gorshner almost walked out on the episode until he realized he had nowhere else to go during Hurricane Sandy. <laughs> Sorry, Joshua, but if I had to choose between this episode and Hurricane Sandy, I'd go and take surfboard lessons. I've put off writing my review of this for a while now, mostly due to procrastination, but also because I needed to find a proper way of channeling my anger when I watched this episode. Finally, I believe I found the proper wording. And so, here is my review of Look Before You Sleep. God. We open to a bunch of ponies picking branches off of trees. Also, if you're wondering why some of this source video lags, it's because the only decent version I could find on YouTube was a reversed version. I wasn't vigilant enough to find a copy of the episode that would only last on YouTube for four days. Looks like someone took the Edward Scissorhands course in community service. <laughs> Just take the broken limbs down, Rarity. Don't y'all care about nothing other than pretty fine? Don't you all care about nothing other than making up words? I simply cannot imagine why the Pegasus ponies would schedule a dreadful downpour this evening and ruin what could have been a glorious sunny day. Well, you know what? In an episode like this, there are no rays of sunshine. Think more practical-like, will ya? They accidentally skipped a scheduled sprinkle last week, so we need a doozy of a downpour to make up for it is all. You know, this actually sounds like something interesting. How does the weather work in this town? If they miss a scheduled sprinkle, is there no weather whatsoever? Does a sprinkle times two equal a downpour? A doozy of one, to be more exact? All these questions and more will never be answered because the concept will bore the audience, apparently. The rain comes down, causing Rarity to be a prima donna and worry about her hair getting wet. Eat your heart out, John Travolta. Applejack suggests to Rarity that she shield her hair under a bench, like they're in the middle of a frickin' tornado. I prefer not to get my hooves muddy. Gah, there is just no pleasing ya, is there? Everything's gotta be just so. Hey, what do you have against OCD? How dare you disrespect my kind? Y'all wouldn't know useful if it came up and bit you. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Does so, does not. Does so, does not. Does so, does not. Does so, infinity. Ha! Does not infinity plus one. <laughs> These are our main characters, ladies and germs. Two immature bickering 30-somethings. Was Lena Dunham a guest writer? What say we go our separate ways before one of us says something she will regret? Sure. I reckon y'all are gonna say something you'll regret first. Oh my god, they're still bickering. Might I mention that this hatred comes from nowhere? I mean, I know I'm nitpicking, but from what I can recall, the only instances of tension were maybe Dragon Shy and the Ticketmaster, which doesn't count anyway because everyone hated each other in that episode. Maybe if they hand cut the rarity section out of Apple Buck season, then there would be a reason. I refuse to accept it as just the city folk versus country folk trope because I want to believe that Lauren Faust isn't dumb enough to just enforce negative stereotypes about country people and, to a lesser extent, sophisticated city people. I know I already have the running gag about the country stereotype bumpkin checklist thingy, but... The opening theme hasn't played yet and I'm already broken. That's just sad. So anyway, Applejack and Rarity must stick together to brace the storm. Really guys, I've seen Noah. 
All you need is to find some giant rock monsters and they'll help you build an ark. Twilight? Come inside, girls, quick! Uh, no, let's not. Is inside a tree really the best place to be in a lightning storm? Actually, no. In addition to striking the very top part of the tree, the lightning would go through the dead inner part between the bark and the tree. That said... It is if you have a magical lightning rod protecting your home like I do. Come on in! Oh, well, that made my internet research really pointless, Twilight. Thank you kindly for your hospitality. Uh, do be a polite house guest and go wash up, please, won't you? Strange. I thought she already was wet. Wait, why does Applejack go outside to clean her mud off? That's where she got the mud to begin with. I would assume that she would still have mud on her hooves by the time she got back in. Why doesn't Applejack just use the mat that she was clearly standing on when she noticed her dirty hooves? Isn't that what doormats are supposed to be for? And why does Rarity not have any mud on her hooves? She was running at the same pace and on the same ground as Applejack. It's weird how something so insignificant can make me ask so many questions. Some storm, huh? The Pegasus ponies sure have outdone themselves this time. Yes, the British yeah, Airborne Forces sure have outdone themselves. It? Spike is away in Canterlot on royal business. Stop creating concepts for better episodes, please. I'm home all alone tonight. <gasps> you and Applejack should totally sleep over. We'll have a slumber party. I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> the character traits and all-around personality tell me otherwise, Twilight. Ladies and gentlemen, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the show known for its dominantly masculine fan base, has an episode about a slumber party. This sounds like a fan fiction. No, really, the basic plot sounds like a clop fic. Two girls enter the hospitality of another girlfriend for a stormy night. Due to not wanting to drown or get struck by lightning, they are unable to leave the house. So they are forced to have a slumber party with their friend, who is ambiguously bipolar, with such activities as pillow fighting, truth or dare, and getting each other, ahem, wet. Oh my god. Do you know what this means? We're watching a canon episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, that is actually a clop fic Minus the clop. I'm reviewing a clop fan fiction. This wasn't part of my job application. Give this to Skullman. He make him review this trash. Oh, you like that so much, wouldn't you? Well, too bad, Spaghetti. I've got enough fanfic requests as it is, and the Let's Plays are keeping me busy. <laughs> yeah, Black Ops 2 is such a tough and complex game to play. You don't play it, so you don't know! Besides, it's been a month and a half since you've made a Sugar Cube Critic, so at least put some freaking effort into your upkeep! <sighs> Fine. You read Cupcakes yet? Fuck you! Look, even Rarity doesn't seem to want any part of this. Slumber 101. All you've ever wanted to know about slumber parties, but were afraid to ask. Ah, uh, yes. I think that's from the author of that other book, Sleep and Lowdown. Rarity reluctantly decides to have a slumber party with Twilight, because she figures that, since she's dealing with a Terra Strong character, she'll probably end up threatening to cry if Rarity doesn't play with her. <gasps> what in tarnation? <laughs> Now, wait just a gall darn minute. You make me wash the mud off my hooves, but it's okay for y'all to have mud all over your faces? Ha <laughs> ha. Because she's a country bumpkin, she confuses mud mask for actual mud. <laughs> Where's the driller killer? We're giving each other makeovers! <laughs> we have to do it. It says so in the book. Wait a minute. Is this a ripoff of the party episode of SpongeBob? Why plagiarize that episode? At least Griff on the brush off was smart enough to rip off Barry Scary and not everyone knows it's Bendy. And why is Applejack so afraid of lightning? Isn't she the tough character? Maybe. What in the world is this for? Huh. To reduce the puffiness around one's eyes, of course. Huh. I didn't know Larry the Cucumber was so rejuvenating. <laughs> Isn't this exciting? We'll do everything by the book, and that will make my slumber party officially fun! You not make sense good. I never thought I'd say this, 
But this scene was done way much better and flushed away. This is gonna be the best slumber party ever! Yay! Yay! They then move on from makeovers that did absolutely nothing to change their appearance to ghost stories. Oh, cool. I got one. It's called the Oz Incident. Once upon a time, there was a man named Dopper. I'd like to tell y'all the terrifying tale of the prissy ghost who drove every pony crazy with the run necessary neatness. Yours is not a subtle approach. Never heard of it, but I have a much better one. It's the horrifying story of the messy, inconsiderate ghost who irritated every pony within a hundred miles. Ooh. Forget Lena Dunham. Clearly the junior high generation wrote this episode. No wonder it's so incompetent. Actually, I'm not sure they wrote it. The Happy Tree friends haven't shown up yet. I've got one. This story is called The Legend of the Headless Horse. If the Headless Horse doesn't end up being Christopher Walken, consider me disappointed. And just when the last pony thought she was safe, there, standing right behind her, just inches away was... The Headless Horse! <laughs> Well, that was unprofessional, Twilight. You're supposed to make fun of your friends for being scared, not check off ghost stories in your little book. This is why you don't throw a slumber party by the book. Ghost you know, seeing as how this is a sleepover, I'm more interested in checking if Sandy Olsen is vomiting in the bathroom. S'mores, check. Now the next item of fun we have to do is truth or dare. Uh, stop making this sound like a fan fiction. I keep expecting Rarity to start talking about the Estru cycle while simultaneously hitting on Twilight. I may have done some research for this episode. Moving on. Eh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe by truth or dare, they're just going to watch a film with Madonna. I dare Applejack to do something carefully and neatly for change. Um, I think she does. I'm pretty sure Applejack keeps her barrels and buckets of apples pretty well organized. Oh yeah? Well, I dare Rarity to lighten up and stop obsessing over every last little detail for a change. I think the truth of the matter is that some pony could stand to pay a little more attention to detail. Can you guys just arm wrestle so that this bickering can cease? I dare you to step outside and let your precious tight and mane get ruined again. <laughs> You have to. It's the rule. Shut up, Twilight. You know nothing about throwing a slumber party. I hope this game ends before Charlie's asked to kiss the most beautiful mare in the room. I really want to know why Twilight just has this frou-frou princess costume just lying around. Does her tree have the same rules as Graham's handbag from this side of paradise? Um, do I ever get a turn? I dare you to enter the next rodeo when it comes to town. I dare you not to enter the next rodeo that comes to town. I dare you to not comb your mane a hundred times before bed. And I dare you to comb yours just once. You know what? I dare both of you to act like actual f***ing adults. I mean, here you are, two educated, pretty well respected 30-somethings, just bickering like your f***ing children. I mean, I am so sick and tired of this city folk versus country folk bullshit. I just, just please do me a favor and shut the f up! It is in times like these that I need to go to my happy place, so... We're gonna take a break while I go... there. Colin did not fully understand the significance of the moment. He immersed himself in Ovid, grieving his loss in the Already? That's a bit of a short break. Can I at least have-
your nose to the grindstone. I'm still drinking this. I, uh, I think we should check off Truth or Dare and move on. Let's see what our next fun, fun, fun thing is, shall we? Hmm, what does this mean? Pillow fight? As long as it doesn't turn to anything like the pillow fight from Animal House, I'm fine. Then again, if you did use actual woman instead of ponies... Oh, please. I am not at all interested in participating in something so crude. <laughs> oh! It is on! Why'd this suddenly become epic? Because it's about to go down! <laughs> Yes, just make this the whole episode. It's less depressing than the rest of the slumber party, which borders on becoming a less interesting party than the sleepover from Princess Diaries 2. Uh, girls? Maybe we should take it down a notch? I will, she will! <laughs> she started it! This episode doesn't end with a bunch of augers killing every pony. I'm gonna go crazy. Finally, they decide to go to sleep, but the fact that Applejack and Rarity have to share the same bed still makes my fear of clop fix boil. It's not like I want to bring up Lawn Forgotten and Julia Roberts movies, but not only is Applejack sharing a bed with an OCD pony, but she's literally sleeping with the enemy. Keep your muddy hooves on your side of the bed. My hooves ain't muddy. There might still be a little on them. They're right. See? <laughs> now who's being inconsiderate? Dear God, stop bickering. Is this supposed to be funny, Charlotte Fullerton? Watching two best friends fight? I, is this supposed to be relatable? So we pretty much spend two minutes watching these two pretentious <laughs> squabble because it worked so well before, right? Finally, Twilight does the only smart thing she'll ever do in this episode, and breaks up the fight. It says right here that the number one thing you're supposed to do at a slumber party is have fun. And thanks to you two, I can't check that off. I've been trying my darndest to get along. No, it is I who have been trying my best. No, it was me. No, it was I. Me! I! Shut up! I hope you're happy. Both of you. You've ruined my very first slumber party! The makeover, the s'mores, truth or dare, the pillow fight! I mean, is there anything else that could possibly go wrong? Line. Where's Bubsy when you need him? I know, right? Where is Bubsy when you need him? So a giant tree ends up lodged through the window, and Applejack blames Rarity for it. That's something original. Is what we call getting her done. When did Applejack turn into Stork K. Riley doing a classy impression of Larry the Cable Guy? Oh, I'm mighty sorry, Twilight. It's... well, it's not okay. There's a giant tree branch in the middle of my bedroom, and the book doesn't say anything about having a giant tree branch at your slumber party, or at least I haven't found that entry yet. Are you impaired in some way? You know I'm running out of things to say about a bad episode. When I just resort to doing what I did in my Ghostbusters review and play a bunch of stock footage that all says the same thing. What in tarnation are y'all doing over there? Cleaning up this mess some pony made! Who was that again? Oh right, that's you! There's no possible way this episode can redeem itself. Look! I'm sorry, alright? What was that? I said I'm sorry! I should've listened to you when you noticed where this here branch would end up. 
Your annoying attention to detail would have saved us from this whole mess. But right now, you need to stop being so dang pussy, picking up all those little things, and help me move the one big thing in here that actually matters. Please! See? Well, they do have a section about backyard slumber parties. Is that what we're doing right now? Does this count as camping? How? Why? What? Well, in an abbreviated housewife guzzling parties. red wine is, is not as oblivious as Twilight is in this episode. Long story short, Rarity uses Chekhov's skill from the beginning of the episode to save the day. And as the hack's guide to screenwriting enforces, Thanks. Applejack and Rarity start to get along. The books do not f***ing matter. Oh look, they're playing a game that can help pass the time despite the electronic 20 cue ball not knowing who George Michael is. Are we getting warmer? Why? Is it too cold in here for you? I can turn up the heat. <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte, for your Generation 3.5 level humor. Well, at least we won't hear any more bickering. See? We could have been having fun like this all along. If only some pony hadn't been so persnickety. Well, maybe she wouldn't have been if some pony else hadn't been so slubby. If you feel like that's what you want to do. I declare my first slumber party a success. Yeah! <laughs> have fun? Check. <laughs> yeah, you think that, Twilight, but did I have fun? The last shot shows the sun finally showing because it no longer has to hide from this episode. What else do I have to say? I don't know. How about for stars that this is one of the worst episodes I've ever seen? For one thing, this episode made absolutely no god sense. How is it that two well-respected 30-something women can act like such unsettled buffoons? Also, if Rarity truly is the element of generosity, though I have my doubts after the last episode review, then why was she so inconsiderate to Twilight? Speaking of which, what was up with Twilight in this episode? You'd think that someone who lives in a library would know how to react to threatening situations. It was actually out of character for her to even hold a slumber party. I could make the argument that ever since she's liked the concept of friends, she's now taken an interest in slumber parties, but still she might attend parties for friends, but she's not the kind of person to hold one herself. In addition to being imbecilic, Twilight is also creepy. Like, really, really creepy. I mean, just look at this rape face. I keep half expecting her to start breaking Applejack and Rarity's ankles with a sledgehammer. I made mention of how much this sounded like a fanfiction, and I don't mean just clock necessarily. Remember how in Double Rainbow, Rainbow Dash didn't act like her cartoon self, and more like her fanfic self? Well, that's the vibe here. Twilight acts like a naive airhead with a rape face, Applejack acts like an arrogant tomboy, and Rarity acts like a one-dimensional waifu with OCD. The fact that all three didn't start f***ing caught me by surprise. This episode, from the very beginning to the very end, is a train wreck. End of story. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give this episode a 3. But to the episode's credit, it doesn't have some of the qualities of worse episodes. It doesn't have animal abuse, or religion, or constant musical numbers. Whatever. I'm gonna go bury this episode in my backyard. Catch you next time. That episode was such a piece of sh**.